They say if you want to have the best, you have to have deep pockets. In disc golf, it's no different. Let's get into it. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and let me just start off by saying, Salty Unicorn Disc Golf Apparel, killing it. Got my new jerseys, and look, 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 look. The new logo, what's up, on all my new shirts. These shirts are fantastic, link in the description below, as well as Power Disc Golf Academy, Lone Star, Putting Confidently, D-Clip, all down there in the description. Uh, let me start off by saying, uh, I played in the Chocolate Town Classic, a couple weeks ago now and I had a guy come up to me in between rounds to talk to me introduce himself I love that uh, let me just tell you all I love that so if you ever see I know a lot of my viewers are probably local if you ever see me in a tournament or on a on a course playing around just come up and say hey tell me you're a subscriber tell me what you like about the channel what you don't like about the channel I love I love the feedback uh, so that I can you know tailor my videos to what the people need because this is that's why I do it. I do it for you. If I did it for me, I would have quit a long time ago. I do it for you all. So tell me what you want, what you don't want, uh, and if you see me out in the wild, <laughs> come up and say hey. Now I do have to apologize. I feel like a complete heel that I didn't get this guy's name. So if you're watching right now, put your name in the comments below, and uh, let's get out and play Broken Chains at, at, at some point, and I'll probably make a video of it. Maybe do a Chasing 900 at Broken Chains and uh, uh, feature you in it. So uh, go ahead and put your name down and, and I'm sorry for not getting your name. I really apologize about that. Okay, so now onto the subject of the video, the power pocket, specifically the deep power pocket. I mean, I think it's one of the things that we as amateurs struggle with the most besides timing, getting into that power pocket and especially the deep power pocket. And this is spurred on by two things. I have two big issues. One is collapsing my elbow when I throw, right? I can be my elbow up and not getting deep enough into the pocket. And I had a lesson with Josh yesterday. Uh, just a quick shout out. Happy one year anniversary, Josh. It's been one year since you've been coaching me. And yes, he watches my videos, maybe. And he confirmed, yeah, I can get behind that. And then he added a third. So <laughs> anyway, in my lesson with him yesterday, we worked on keeping my elbow up and the third thing, but that's not what this video is about. So the second reason for this video is that you all know that I'm part of the Power Disc Golf Academy and in the Facebook community, which by the way, is the sleeper value of the Power Disc Golf Academy. I mean, our coaches are great. We've added AB now and the lessons are on point and they're super helpful but the sleeper value is the Facebook community. We encourage each other, we post successes and failures, and uh, we post videos of form to get feedback. And lately, the past two or three weeks, probably the form videos that have been posted there have one striking similarity. And a drumbeat of my comments is, we're all lagging. We're all in this position. So this video is to address my issues and to hopefully help address some others issues who struggle with the same things as me. So let's talk about why to get into the deep power pocket, right? I'm talking deep power pocket here. Uh, we all know that this position does not allow us, right? Getting pinched off like this in our throw does not allow us to get into the power pocket effectively. And this promotes having to come around with our disc to release it. And that destroys our accuracy and our power. We need to get the disc from point A to point B the fastest. And I've said this in a couple of different videos and the easiest way to do that, the fastest way to do that is in a straight line. And coming through the power pocket is the straightest line that we can use in a backhand form. Uh, it's not a straight line, but it's the straightest line that we can use. Right? So this gets us from point A to point B the fastest. And that's the purpose of a backhand, is to get the disc from full backswing to release as fast as humanly possible. In order to do that, we generate power or energy in our form. It's like a wave in the ocean. And you see that it's swelling and building and gaining a lot of energy until it gets to the final point where it 
releases and breaks and releases all of its energy. That's our backhand form. Our backhand form is utilizing our brace and our rotation and our core and our shoulders and our arm to generate that energy, to swell up that energy into one final point until it finally breaks and releases that energy into the disc. My opinion is this is the breaking point. This is the energy transfer from here to the hip is the energy transfer that we're building up in our form to get as much speed as possible into the disc flying through the air. And the further we get into the power pocket, the more tension that we build in order to release that in a much more powerful way, right? We get up here, we get a lot of tension right here. Our, our wrist gets more curled so we can put the most speed and spin on the disc the farther we get into the power pocket. So the deep power pocket in my estimation, is where we want to be. So now we have to answer the question, how do we get there? About two or three weeks ago, I stumbled on a couple of videos by Armory Disc Golf, and I will link them in the description down below. The name of the first one was, How Pros Get More Whip Than You, and the second one is, How Pros Get More Snap Than You. And in these two videos, uh, Nick discusses the whip how to get into the power pocket consistently, and then the snap, the reason that we need to and how to get into the deep power pocket. So we're gonna, I'm gonna discuss those two things and my take on what he says in those videos and how I'm applying them to myself. So first, the whip, the first video, how they whip better than you. And we have to talk about the whip. A, a lot of us, I think, have the misconception that the whip is us turning our body and the disc lagging behind and then just whipping your, your arm through. And, and I know some of you may be sitting there thinking, no, we don't think that, but I think more people than we want to admit think this. A whip is only effective if the handle is rigid. And, and Nick talks about this in the video. Take a piece of string, just a regular piece of string, and try to use it like a whip and see how effective it is. Now attach that string to a pencil or something and then whip it much more effective because the handle becomes rigid. Translate that to our disc golf form. Where is the handle in the whip of a backhand? Well, some of us may say it's our body. That can't be the case. Or if our body is the, the rigid handle and our arm, our whole arm is the whip, then we get into this position. And we all know that that is not a powerful position. Nick suggests, and I agree, that the whip handle is your upper arm and your shoulders or your upper body and that this angle here needs to stay rigid and we've talked about this for years but i think this has gotten lost like we can battle whether it's 90 degrees or not 90 degrees and whatever it is this needs to stay rigid in order for us to get here and more than that he talks about focusing on our elbow being outside of our body right so keep this rigid and then the elbow and the wrist is then fluid, right? The handle transfers to the end of the whip, which is more fluid. But then we got to keep this part of the handle outside of our body in order to help us get into this position. So we need to keep the elbow outside of our body during the whole throw from here to here. And if I turn, now my backswing is here. You see my out elbow outside of my body. And as I come back through and I rotate my body, again, keeping my elbow on the outside of my body and then releasing the disc. This gets us into the power pocket. And you all know how I do this. How do I practice? Progressions, right? Trebuchet Disc Golf talked about this in his most recent video. Disc Golf form is about progression. We don't go from A to the final product all at once. We go from point A to point B to point C to point D however and many iterations we need to get to our final product. That's what I've done my entire life. It's what I preach over and over again on this channel. Use progressions to help you cement, solidify form. And as always, my progression is first standstills. So I'll get into my position, my elbow up, keep my angle of my whip steady and stiff here. And then even in my backswing, keep this stiff, let this part of my arm be loose. And honestly, this doesn't matter. Only 
really to me, this matters. Watch Emerson Keith. Like, does he ever get beyond here with his disc and his backswing? And he still throws it really far. Why is that? Because this back here doesn't matter in our backswing. It's this that matters because we're all eventually getting here. So no matter where I am back here, Calvin is another example. Ricky Wysocki is another example. None of them fully extend. They're all bent arm. It's because this is the most important part, the, the handle. So get set up, get back, keep your, keep your angle steady and rigid, and then come back through, keeping the angle steady and rigid until you release, right? And just stand still over and over again. The second iteration is just the X step, keeping the same thing. So set up your arm the way you want it, get your angle the way you want it, keeping your elbow outside of your body, go into the X step, elbow outside, keep the elbow outside the body the entire time. So standstills, do that for a long time. Like guys, these steps take weeks or months to solidify. Then go to the two step, the X step, just the X step, and then go to the full walk up. And focusing on keeping this and this outside your body will help you get consistently into the power pocket. I've, I've practiced this for like three weeks now, used it in the Chocolate Town Classic, and I'm consistently in the power pocket and my drives are consistently far. Like I was landing either with everyone else or farther than everyone else consistently during that tournament. And I'm, you know, 20, 30 years older than the other competitors I'm competing against. How do we get from the power pocket then to get our body to pull the disc up farther into the deep power pocket? And he talks about this a little bit in his snap video. This helps us generate more snap because we're getting more tension. And as we release, there's just more energy and more tension to release faster. So it gives us more snap. In order to get here from here, our disc has to outpace our body as we're going through our form. Like in order to get here, we just have to keep up with our body, right? Our body rotates from there and then rotates here and then rotates there. And that's okay, but I don't think that's the most effective or the most powerful. Our disc should outpace our body. So we need to incorporate more arm. That's the phrase that's going to get a lot of you because I know a lot of you are sitting there going, you're talking about arming the disc. I'm, I'm not really. Let me show you what arming the disc is real quick. That's arming the disc. I threw that shot with nothing but my arm. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is using our arm to accelerate the speed of the disc in addition to what our body is doing. Like we have speed in our disc from body rotation here. I'm talking about using the body rotation and then including the arm to make the disc go even faster. If I can give you an example, and, I'm, and please don't do this. This is just an example. I don't condone anyone attempting this example. But if you get into the back of a pickup truck and that truck starts driving down the road at 60 miles an hour, you have a ball in your hand, the truck moving 60 miles an hour and you throw that ball in the direction that the truck is traveling. In relation to the ground, is that ball going faster or slower than the truck or the same speed? Well, it's going faster, right? If I put 50 miles an hour of force on that ball, 50 miles an hour plus the 60 that the car is moving, in relation to the ground, that ball is now traveling 110 miles an hour. Now, yes, I get it. Friction and gravity and all, all that is going to slow the ball down almost immediately. But the second the ball leaves your hand, the speed of that ball is about 110 miles an hour in relation to the ground. That's what I'm talking about, right? Utilizing the speed that the disc is already going, which is the truck, and using the arm to accelerate that, which is the throw. That's what we're talking about. And that, to me, is the only way we're going to get our disc into the deep pocket. And it takes intentional thought. It, we won't do this automatically. And we have to train our body to realize what is happening or we won't be able to do it. So what does the progression look like here? The progression is this, and, and, and you'll recognize this because Josh does this on his channel. Teaching our body to get our arm through the zone first looks like this. 
Just do that over and over again. Teach your body to get the arm through the zone first. You're like, oh, you're arming it. Yes, there I am. And that is because, again, we are iterative. We, we need to learn in progression. And I need my body to understand this is what the disc coming through first feels like. The next progression to me is getting the disc through the zone first and allowing the shoulders to follow. Because in essence, that's what we're talking about. The disc outpacing the shoulders as the shoulders rotate. So it looks something like this. The disc comes through the zone first and the shoulders follow through. Okay. So we train our bodies there. This is what it feels like for our shoulders to be rotating, but the disc to still be outpacing them. The last iteration is now rotating the shoulders and getting the arm faster than the shoulders. And since we've trained our body that this is what it feels like for the disc to get through the zone first, and now this is what it feels like for the shoulders to be following the disc through the zone, we can actively put speed to our shoulders and the body should know what it feels like for the disc to outpace them. And we get much more power. So to me, that's the only way we're getting into the deep pocket. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, thanks to the Armory Disc Golf guys. Again, I'll link their stuff down below. Go ahead and subscribe to them. They do some cool stuff over there, have some really good information on their channel. Uh, I hoped this, some, this sparked something, uh, this piqued your interest into trying these things out. They have been helping me. Now, I'm just getting into the pocket. I haven't tried the deep pocket progressions yet. That's, uh, that'll probably be in the off season. But hopefully there's something that you can try out to see if it works for you. As always, I'm just trying things to see if they work and help relay that information to you to help you progress as I progress. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.